best morning for you. Praise the Lord. Your problems are solved. The cloud is gone. The storm is over. Every morning is going to be a good morning. By the way, by the way, by the way, what's today's date? It has to be the best morning for you. Remember when Jesus came to wipe away all your tears, to take away all your sin, and to take away all your sickness. Tell me good morning. I return that to you for your family, for yourself, for your business. Good day and good morning and good week and good year. Praise the Lord. Why are we even going to preach? God has done everything. I said God has done everything. I'm just going to open the scriptures and just tell you what God has done already. And then after the message, you open your mouth wide and the Lord said, you will fill it up. Yeah. It's going to be a good day today. Yeah. All our brothers and sisters everywhere, we also greet you wherever you are. And you are listening now, we want to tell you, this is going to be a good morning for you. Yeah. And it's going to be better for your life and your family. Yeah. And everything you touch... Bad will turn to good. Terrible will turn to wonderful. Because Jesus, the Lord has come, he is on your side. Let's close our eyes for prayer. Heavenly Father, we thank you today and we bless your name. Thank you, Lord, because you sent Jesus Christ to bless us. Christ has come. And because Christ has come, all the works of the devil, they are destroyed from our lives. I bring all my brothers and sisters, all our children, everybody, and all our invitees, I bring everyone before you. I pray, Lord, everything today will turn to good in Jesus' name. Lord, where there are tears, I pray you wipe those tears away. Where there is any sorrow, take the sorrow away. Where there is sickness, take the sickness away. Where there is affliction, take the affliction away. And I pray, Lord, your power will descend mightily today and bless your wonderful people in Jesus' name. Hold our hand. Answer the prayers of your people. And Lord, I pray at the end, everybody without exception will rejoice in your presence. We thank you, Lord, because we know you have answered. In Jesus' name we pray. Thank you very much. You can sit down. This morning, this good morning, this wonderful morning, we're looking at the message of wonderful discovery. A wonderful discovery. There are many people that go through life with their eyes closed. There are many people that go through life with their minds closed. There are many people that go through life with their understanding that age. And the day Christ comes to you and he opens your heart and he opens your mind and it opens your eyes to see what you have never seen. That day, you'll make a wonderful discovery. And this day, you have got it. How many years we have got the riches of heaven and the hidden treasures of heaven and of Christ all around us. And the Lord has supplied all that we need for the spirit, for the soul, and for the body. But because our eyes were not open to those riches, and they were not open to those treasures, because of that many of us we have gone through life, not enjoying what belongs to us, but this day there is a discovery already. You will discover those hidden treasures. You will discover those heavenly riches and it will bless your life in Jesus' name. 
there is a prayer you need to be quietly praying while the message is going on. In Psalm 119. Psalm 119. Verse 18. Open thou my eyes. Open thou my eyes. What a prayer. Do you see the psalmist preach like this? It's because he knew there are many, many treasures of the Lord. And there is much wealth and riches that belong to the believer that heaven has provided. But until God opens our eyes, we'll not be able to see. But thank God, as we pray this prayer this morning, open thou my eyes, you will see. That I may behold wondrous things. That I may behold wondrous things. How many people they call me to the Christian faith? And all they can tell is that they behold terrible things, terrible experiences, unwanted experiences. If you are there this morning, I'm telling you, God is going to reverse every negative thing in your life. Because He will open your eyes and you will behold the wondrous, wonderful things out of His world that belongs to you. Open up my eyes that I, not only that we, yes, we are going to have our eyes open, but you in particular. There is something that belongs to you that you have never seen, you will see today. There is something you possess, you have never held, you will hold it today. There is something heaven has given you as a gift and you have never enjoyed, but this is your day. Open thou my eyes, that I in particular may behold wondrous Wonderful things out of thy law. Exodus chapter 15. In Exodus chapter 15, I'm reading from verse 23. Exodus chapter 15, verse 23. And when they came to Mara, they could not drink of the waters of Mara, for they were bitter, therefore the name of each was called Mara. They were going on a journey. Life is like a journey. When you became a child, that is when you came to this world, you started moving on and moving on up to this stage. And it's a journey. How many times in your journey have you found a bitter experience, a terrible experience, an unwanted experience? When the children of Israel were going from Egypt unto the land of Canaan, they never thought, they never knew they would meet any place that is called Mara. Bitterness, unwanted, unexpected experience, but so it happened. But thank God, even though it has happened this that way, God will show us something today. Verse 25, and he cried unto the Lord. That's what you have done this morning. You have prayed this morning. You have opened your heart to the Lord this morning. I want to assure you everything you said in your prayer this morning, God has heard. God has taken note of everything. And everything is the body for you. And you have opened your heart to pour out that body. The Lord has assured us is going to give you a ready answer. And he cried unto the Lord. And the Lord showed him a tree. God will show you something. Something you have never seen. You know, their minds were closed. Their eyes were closed. Their intelligence closed. Their understanding darkened. They couldn't see. There is solution. But I want to tell you, there is solution for every problem. There is solution for every problem. 
the reason we have not seen it is because we have not prayed that prayer. Open up my eyes that I may behold wondrous things out of thy law. And Moses cried unto the Lord, and the Lord showed him a tree. The tree had been there all the time. And the tree was there when they, before they got there. The solution to your problem had been here before you came here. The answer to your prayer had been reserved for you before you ever got here. All you need to do is for God to just touch your heart and open your eyes and see. This is the solution to your problem. And then we're told the Lord showed him a tree which when it cast into the waters, the waters were made sweet. And there he made for them a statute and an ordinance. And there he proved them. Verse 26. And said, as a result of that discovery, as a result of God opening the eyes of Moses, as a result of God in our eye today is what God said he will do that he will touch our lives he will turn everything around he will transform our lives and every possibility will become possible in Jesus name I want to remind you that in that verse 25 he made his statutes with them God opening our eyes is not just to give us one isolated, solitude blessing only one day in the year, only one day in the retreat. It's to make a statute and it's to make a covenant, an ordinance. And this is the statute and this is the ordinance and this is the covenant that the Lord is making. Look at it now in verse 26. And said, If thou wilt diligently hearken to the voice of the Lord thy God, and that is what we're doing now. If thou wilt diligently hearken, in this church we praise the Lord, we always listen. And as we listen, the Lord will bless you. I said, The Lord will bless you because you accept the word. Because you receive the word, and because you believe the word, and because you know this is the word coming from the Lord. If you will diligently hearken to the voice of the Lord thy God, and will do that which is right in his sight. That's why God has given us grace to do that which is right, and we will do that which is right. Or live according to his word. And that life that is lived in obedience to the word of God will bring untold, numberless, countless blessings upon our lives in Jesus' name. And will give ear to his commandment and keep all his statutes. Then he said, I will not, I will put none of these diseases upon thee which I have brought upon the Egyptians. You see what God is saying? He said, when I open your eyes and I show you the tree and I show you the benefit coming from the cross of Christ that you have never beheld, that you have never seen before. When I open your eyes and you see and behold and I make this covenant and statute and ordinance with you, then he says, then he says, I will put none of the diseases of Egypt of the world upon you. You will not have the diseases of the world. I said you will not have the diseases of the world. They say this is a major disease in the world. That one is a rampant disease in the world. That one is a terrible, life-threatening disease in the world. It will not come to you. God said, I will put none, I will put none, I will put none. He didn't say some or just a few, but he said, I will put none of these diseases upon you, which are brought upon the Egyptians. For I am the Lord that does what? 
I said I just watch that he led you this morning, you are healed in Jesus' name. Because the favor of the Lord is upon our lives. Because the goodness of God is upon our lives. And because the grace of God is inexhaustible. The grace of God that covers every problem and every sin and every situation in which man finds himself because of that grace and because of that goodness it says i am the lord not i was not i will be but i am in the present tense today i am the lord that does what he left thee you are healed in Jesus' name. There is no reason with all this wonderful blessing of God. There is no reason with all this proclamation, pronouncement of the Lord. There is no reason why any of us should ever keep any sickness that belongs to the world. They belong to the world, we we'll throw it back to the world. I said we we'll throw it back to the world. And the blessing and the healing and the deliverance and the health and the victory and the dominion that belongs to the child of God will receive and will claim in Jesus' name. You will open your eyes and you will see the moment you see when your eyes are open. The moment you see when your mind is open. The moment you see when your heart is open. You'll discover the riches of the hidden wells. That the Lord has prepared, provided for every one of us in Luke, Luke chapter 24, Luke chapter 24, I'm reading from verse 6, 15 and 16, Luke verse 24, I'm reading from verse 15, and it came to pass that while they commute together, and reason Jesus himself drew near and went with them. For their eyes were holding that they should not know him. That's the problem many people have. Jesus Christ, the Savior, is so near. But their eyes are closed, held up, holding that they did not know the Savior. And there are many people that are sick all over the world. And Jesus Christ, the great physician, is right there with them. But their eyes are holding that he is held up and closed, bandaged, that they could not see Jesus Christ, the healer, the great physician. Many people are afflicted. Many people are tormented. Many people, the devil and the God of this world is bringing terrible oppression, affliction upon them. And Jesus Christ, the deliverer, is close by, right by their side. And their eyes are holding that you could not see. The Lord is by your side there. The healer is by your side there. The deliverer is by your side there. The one that transforms life and changes every negative thing to positive is right there. I pray you will see him today. In Vastachi, in Vastachi, and it came to pass as a search at meet with them. He took bread and blessed it and break it and gave unto them. Christ will give something to you. I said he will give something to you. What then happened? But start to one. And their eyes, and their eyes, and the eyes of the people that didn't know that Jesus Christ was near, that Jesus Christ, the Savior, was right there with them. They didn't know that the healer was there with them. They didn't know that the one that turns our lives around, the people that didn't know that Jesus Christ, the Savior, the Redeemer, and the healer, the Deliverer, they didn't know that Jesus Christ was there. 
the moment he gave them the bread, he'll give you the bread of life. And their eyes were open and in knee, you will know. I said you will know. And he knew that he, they knew him and he vanished out of their sight. But already he dropped the blessing. He gave the blessing. When he reveals himself to you, when he shows himself unto you, blessing will come to you in Jesus' name. Healing will come to you in Jesus' name. The power of the Almighty will be released into your life the moment you see. And the moment you know that this is Christ, and that Christ is right there by your side, and the power of heaven will have a great, great effect in your life in Jesus' name. But he did something else. He also expounded the word of God unto them. But looking at verse 32, and this said, one to another, did not our heart burn when within us, while he talked with us by the way, and while he opened unto us the scriptures, did it our heart burn, did our heart yearn, did our heart desire, was it there something stirring up in our hearts when he opened to us? The scriptures, he'll open the scriptures to you today and your heart will be transformed. And your life will be transformed. And every circumstance, every situation in your life will be transformed in Jesus' name. You will make a wonderful discovery. I will make a wonderful discovery. I said I will make a wonderful discovery. And when that discovery comes into your life, things will no longer be the same again. Everything will change completely in your life. It is so in Jesus' name. Give me a good, good amen. We're looking at three points in the message. Number one, the discovery of his hidden provision. The discovery. The discovery of his healing provision. It's there. The Lord has provided it. And yet, it's healing for many people. And the day God opens your mind and opens your heart and opens your eyes, you will make that discovery.